Hello, and welcome back to the channel. It's Echo Stretch. In this video, we're going to go over the Feather S2, um, which is the ESP32 S2 development board. Um, a lot of people have been asking which boards to get. Um, do the ESP32s work? Uh, no, they won't work for this process. It has to be an S2 version of the ESP32. Um, this board in particular, it does have 16 megabytes of flash memory compared to the other boards, which only give you 4 megabytes. Um, what that comes down to is how much of the web host that we can go ahead and throw on it. Um, 4 megabytes, as you can see, the other boards you might have used, they, they have the very bit, bare minimum. You can either get just the jailbreak with the trainers, or you can just get the whole host. Um, but you can't have both. This board will open up other doors which can possibly give us the whole host plus the trainers. Um, so there's many of S2 boards you can go ahead and purchase. This is one of the ones that I went ahead with just because it has the 16 megabytes of memory. Now it doesn't come with a USB-C cable so you may have to go ahead and purchase that as well. Most boards don't come with the uh, USB cable anyways. So well, let's go ahead and just jump into the video. We're going to go ahead and get it set up, um, flash it, and then go ahead with the jailbreak. So the first thing what we're going to need to do is jump over to Stooges' uh, GitHub. We're going to need a few things. Um, we'll definitely need the actual files to flash it with. You can go ahead and just download as zip. That is fine. Um, it does describe which boards are good. Um, as you can see, 4 megabyte boards. Uh, the ones with the green check, they w have been tested. Um, but this one right here, which is the 16 megabyte, which is the Feather S2, that's the one that we're going to be using. And then down below, it does show other boards here, which require a wire diagram. So you have to do some soldering, or if you do have uh, jumpers on your USB cable, you can go ahead and plug them into the bottom of the board. But uh, yeah, if we scroll down, these are the two libraries we're going to need. And then we're going to need this here in order to get our ESP32 core. So we can go ahead and just select this here. And we'll go ahead and copy it. And once it's copied, we're good to go. So for these here, just go ahead and click on each one. And you can go with code and then just download as zip. Now I've already went ahead and downloaded both of them. We will need both. So you'll need to go ahead and just download both of them. But once you do have them downloaded, you can go ahead and download a journal. I I believe I'm pronouncing that right, but it does come with Windows, Linux, or Mac. Go ahead and download whichever version you need. But once you do have it downloaded, we'll just go ahead and open it up. And we'll jump into our file, and then Preference. Now the, the link that we copied, we're just going to go ahead and Control-V it, just to paste it in. And we can go ahead and hit OK. And if we go into here, and go to Include Libraries. And we'll go to Add Zip Libraries. Now I already went ahead and downloaded the libraries and added to my desktop. Um, so we have one right here. Go ahead and select that. That's our Auto Sync TCP. Okay, and library has been added. And we'll just go ahead and add the other library. Uh, desktop. And here we go here, ESP Auto Sync Web Server. And that one has been added too. So now we're going to go ahead and jump into our board. So if we go into Tools, come down to Board, and we'll just go over to Board Manager. And if we scroll down, we will find the ESP. There we go. And sorry about that. It's just it's a little funky when you do get in here. Um, so if we go ahead and just hit Install, it will start the install process. It doesn't take long at all. Um, it does have six tools there, but as you can see, it will speed up and it will go pretty quick. So there's two out of six. And there we go, six out of six. Okay, and install the boards. Yeah, usually it is a lot quicker than this here. Um, give it a few seconds here. Oh, there we go. Installation complete. So now that's done, 
uh, and Drono is completely set up. We're good to go. Um, what we're gonna do is just go ahead and file, open. Go ahead and just go to our desktop again, where I downloaded our Stooges uh, files. Um, it does come in a zip. I went ahead and extracted it already, so I should have the folder. Somewhere is here. There we go, right here. So we went to the folder, and then we're just going to go into the ESP32 server 900U. And then we'll go ahead and select the file. Okay, we're just going to close out of the back one. Okay, so if we go ahead over to Tools, and we go down to Board, and just go right into the ESP32, the board that we're looking for is the UM Feather S2. Just go ahead and select it. Now we're going to need to activate the flash mode on the board. So let's go ahead and just get it plugged in. Okay guys, so I do have it plugged in. I do apologize for the long USB-C cable, it's just the one I have. Um, but if you look on the board, we do have our boot button on the right side and reset button on the left. So if we go ahead and hold in the boot button, tap the reset, and then go ahead and let go of the boot, it will go into program mode. Okay, so on the computer side, what we need to do is just go into our device manager, go ahead and open it up. And if we go into the port section, you can see that there is only the communication port, which is on COM1. We need to bring it up, so we'll go ahead and just, on the board, hold in the boot button, hit reset, and then go ahead and let go of boot. And as you can see, it does come up, USB serial device, COM9. Go ahead and close that out now. Then we'll just go into our tools, go down to our port, and just make sure that we do have COM9 selected. Okay, so before we go ahead with the flash, um, let's go ahead and just make this a little bigger just so I can show you what we need to change here. Um, use FAT. Now, with this here, this is only for boards that are bigger than 4 megabytes. And then you got to go ahead and select the partition scheme labeled with FAT or FATFS. So if we go into our tools, um, you scroll down, so you can see right here we will be using the 12.5 FAT. So we can go ahead and just Close that out for a minute, and we're going to go ahead and change this to true. So we'll just go ahead and put true in there, and just go ahead and make sure that you do save the file, and done saving is displayed there. So let's go ahead and just make this a little bigger, just so we can see. We will get a few error messages with this here, just ignore the error messages. As long as it writes, everything will be fine. Um, so we go up here and just go ahead and hit upload. And we'll just let that go. It will take a little bit of time, um, but I'll go ahead and skip ahead. Okay, so we're just about done there. Um, give it a few seconds here, and it should start writing. Once the write process starts, it goes pretty quick. As you can see, 20% there already. And uh, yeah, just give it a couple of seconds, 50%. You can see how quick it goes with the write process. We need to wait for 100% and we need the message leaving to come up. So we can see it right here, 100% and leaving. Now this is the part where I said you will get errors at the end. Um, don't worry about the errors, there are nothing to worry about, everything will work fine. Um, but yeah, we can go ahead and unplug it and we can plug it into our PS4. Either USB will work whether you're running a PS4 Pro or not. You can use the back ports or the front USB port. So let's go ahead and get it plugged in and we'll do the jailbreak. Okay, so now that we're over to the PS4, just confirm that you do have your device plugged in. Whether it be the, if you're using a PS4 Pro, it can be the back port uh, the, or the front port. It doesn't really matter. Just your fat or slim. Just make sure it's plugged into one of your USB ports and you should be good to go. So we'll go ahead and jump over to our settings. Go into our network. And we're just going to make sure we do have connected to the internet checked and we'll go into set up internet connection. Go ahead and select Wi-Fi and easy. Give it a few moments to load up your Wi-Fi connections. And the one we're looking for is the PS4 Web AP. Go ahead and select it. The password is just password. And then we'll go ahead and hit it Done and OK. Give it a few moments to connect. 
And there we go. Check in network environment. And we're good to go. So we go back out of there. There's two ways to access it. You can go in through the user guide. But I do recommend just going ahead and go into your browser and go ahead and clear everything if you do have anything in there. So go ahead and just delete everything. Go to our browser history, clear that as well. And go into our settings and delete our cookies and clear our website data too. So we'll go ahead and back out of there and we'll just close it out completely and then go ahead and launch our browser. It will redirect us. And there you go. So we only have one payload on here. This 2.1.1 uh, automatically comes with the flash. Um, you can go ahead and add more payloads if you want. Uh, maybe in a later video I'll show you how to do that. But uh, let's go ahead and just do the jailbreak right now. Go ahead and select 2.1.1. And it will automatically do everything for you. There's no need to plug in USBs anymore as it's already on the flash. Okay, so load an XFAT. It should pop up with unsupported file system automatically. There we go. And then we should get the Goal 10 launched. There we go. Loading Goal 10 2.1.1. And there we go. So from here, we can go ahead and hit our PlayStation button. Go over to our settings. And you can see that the FTP is loading automatically with the bin loader. That's just because that there is a new feature in it with the... Uh, the Goal 10 INI file. Once you do select them, it remembers it every time, so they'll automatically launch. So if we go ahead and back out of here, and we go ahead and launch our browser, just close out that first window. Now I have the main host selected automatically. Um, I have it in my favorites, the admin panel. Go ahead and select it, and we can see our stats do come up here. Um, as you can see, it does recognize 16 megabyte flash. Scroll down here a little bit. All right, our fat FS size is total size is 11.81. Um, free space on it is 11.8. And then our PS RAM is eight megabytes. And then you can see the free is 7.94. Um, so as you can see, there's a lot more room to add a lot more things. Uh, if we go ahead and jump into our file manager, there's nothing there right now, but you can go into File Uploads. Um, just go ahead and connect from your computer. Select the payload you want. Um, just select files. Go ahead and just upload them. It's very simple. I will make a video on it if you guys need help with it, but uh, it's pretty simple. You go into Config, and in here you can go ahead and change your the name of the host. If you want to name it Echo Stretch, that is fine. Um, Password, you can leave that the same. The port, usually the same. Wi-Fi connection. Um, I haven't played with this yet because I want to be able to add all as if's DNS's to it as well. Um, maybe in a later release, we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, and then the auto USB wait time. Some people say if you switch it to 5,000, it works a lot better. You can go ahead and try it. Let me know in the comments below what you think if it's. 10,000 is a little too long and 5,000 works a lot better. But yeah, once you do configure it in here the way you like it, you can go ahead and hit save configuration. Should do a reboot for you. But other than that there, guys, that's basically it for the video. I just want to get on, show you a simple video of how to get the Feather S2 up and running. I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.